I'm Stefan Langer, I'm a director of photography, although I tend to specialise in visual effects, hence I've just finished some visual effects photography on my eighth Bond movie. We're shooting a pre-title sequence for Platform 3. The idea is of this title sequence is going to ask a lot of questions, it's not going to give any answers. We were shooting at Northweald Station in Essex. It's a small station, it's a very pretty one, lovely Victorian architecture. I brought the Titan X2. It's a two by one panel light, but it's a powerful one and it's got a lot of tricks. We start off inside the train. Anyone old enough to remember the smoking compartments, it's that kind of look, it's that kind of feel. Obviously the train isn't moving, so we've got to simulate that. We actually had an array of Titans ranged down the platform. They were on a chase sequence, so they fed from one end to the other. So it looked like there was a light physically moving along. Doing a chase sequence just with that and not going through any extra diffusion worked well. It's a nice instance of using the Smart Soft. It's like having a 216 diffusion with a control in it and you can wind it all the way down to zero. We brought extra diffusion, we had 20 foot of it with us but we also had that storm that came through. So I'm grateful that the Titan worked perfectly without it. When he pulls into the stop, that's actually another Titan on a stand on wheels, and that was actually wheeled into position. The basic lighting I was using from the station, I had some warm light coming in from the end, which was justified by the main station building being there. From the other end, I'm just saying that's moonlight. For the moonlight, typically you put the lamps as high as you can get. There was no way you could get a genie boom, cherry picker or anything in there. That location was just all, all wrong for it. So we put it on high stands on top of the, the bridge. I love the bit where the train pulled off. We didn't get a chance to rehearse that. We only had one go, so it was a reveal. It had to work first time. But it's the first time that we'd seen how the lights were going to get to him from I don't know, 150 feet, 200 feet down the platform because the train had been in the way all this time. In fact, it did a lot more than I expected. The glow in the sky from the three Titans that were on the bridge, I mean, it was just working so well. In the scene, our character goes to the signal box to investigate. He's seen a shadowy figure in there. So he's gone up steps to have a look. Now, all the time we can hear a distant thunderstorm. Something happens in that thunderstorm when the power goes out. What better cue for all the power to go out in any movie than a thunderstorm and a flash of lightning? And that's what happens. So suddenly he's plunged into darkness and then we need to see the lightning on his face. And it's quite nice because we can zoom in to his face, go in tight on his face, and bang, the lightning suddenly illuminates the shadowy figure that's there. The lightning effect is built into the unit. I didn't have to take it in close, it was, it was really powerful from the other platform. I've used the lamp a few times now, but in smaller situations than this. This is the first time I've actually seen it big enough to see the spread of it. I really like the way the light falls off. This even when it punches in has got a lovely spread at the side and then you wind in the diffusion and it's a very soft spread. It just seems to take it onto another level. There's so much more power there. The light's really good. I was, I was ever so pleased with it. 